Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this kinetic type animation in Adobe After Effects. Well, this is a video from the Pixar series, so with a huge shout out to Pixar, let's begin. So I'm going to click on new composition and I'm going to call it text design. And on the next step, I'm going to set the width and height on 1920. The duration is 6 seconds, which is fine, and the color of the background is white, which is also fine. So now let's create our main text. So I'm going to go towards my type tool and I'm going to set the font to Tusker Grotesque. And I'm going to use the Super 4800 for the weight. And I'm going to write the word thing. And also let's change its color to a blackish color like this one. And I'm going to increase the size. And now let's align it to the middle and let's push it a bit up. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to duplicate this text and I'm going to move it beneath and then I'm going to call it twice. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to change the font weight to medium this time. So here's the basic text design that we have in here. And now what I need to do is that for the next step, I'm going to create a letter morph animation between these two words. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to right click and I'm going to select create shapes from this text. And then one more time, I'm going to select it and I'm going to change its font weight into medium. And now I'm going to create another shape from it. And then I'm going to delete this original layer. So now let's just color label them to yellow. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to use the crazy shapes to set a path keys. And now let's start from two seconds because if we need to offset the keyframes, we can do it correctly. So I'm going to go towards the three seconds to set up last keyframes. And on two seconds, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a path keys. I'm just going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it in here. So now we don't need this layer anymore. So let's just delete it. Great. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go towards the four seconds and then I'm going to finish the loop like this. And also I'm going to copy these sets of keyframes one more time. So we'll have an animation like this. And for the last step, I'm going to select them and I'm going to apply the standard easings by pressing F9. So here's our animation. Good. Now on the next step, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select each path and I'm going to offset it by one frame. Well, that seems good. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to repeat the same step for the second text. So I'm going to create shapes from this text and then I'm going to change the font weight into super. And I'm going to create shapes from the text again. Now we don't need this layer anymore. So let's also set path keys on three seconds for this layer. And I'm going to copy this path moving towards the two seconds, which this one selected we will have an animation like this. Now, as you see, we have a problem with the character C in here. So this just basically tells me that one of the points in here, After Effects cannot calculate how to morph it. So there are a couple of fixes for this problem, such as you can set up some path keys by your pen tool to see if that's going to fix the problem, <laughs> which in this case, clearly it didn't. Or you can check and see if the first vertexes of both shapes are in the same place. So as you see, these little dots in here are the first vertices. And as you see, they are correct. But now to fix that problem, since this is only one character, I'm going to do it manually. So to do that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go towards my type tool and I'm going to write the letter C and I'm going to change its color to a color that I can see like this. And I'm going to make sure that I will snap it to the original layer. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to reduce the opacity and now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to find the letter C, which I believe should be this one. 
So now if we move the time indicator to find out, well, yes, that's the letter C. So I'm going to go exactly on here. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to adjust this manually, which is quite simple. All right, good. Now that we have this animation, let's just finish the loop. And now let's offset each word. And lastly, let's apply standard easings into it. Alright, so here's the basic animation that we want. Now, off to the next step, which I'm going to create a new composition, and I'm going to call it the displacement. And I'm going to bring the design composition in here. And now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new solid layer, and let's call it map, which is for the displacement map, and then I'm going to add the gradient wrap effect into it. And as you know, the time displacement map effects only works with the black and white channels shifting the pixels in time. So I'm just going to swap the colors. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add the time displacement effect. And on the next step, I'm going to go towards the two seconds, which the animation starts. And I'm going to set the displacement layer to the map. And let's also change these parameters to effects and masks. All right. So this is exactly what we want. But now that we applied the time displacement effect, our loop area has changed. So now let's fix that. So to do that, I'm going to move where our animation almost starts. For example, like two seconds and 12 frames. And then I'm going to find out where exactly this animation repeats. So let's just move the time indicator for example, let's go into 4 seconds and 50 frames, where well, this seems about correct. So let's check. All right, we need to sh offset it by one frame. All right, so this is a perfect loop. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set up a marker so I know where the loop starts. Great. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new composition this time and I'm going to call it the text rotation. And then I'm going to bring the time displacement composition and then I'm going to add the transform effect. Now this time I'm going to skew it for like minus 80 degree. And let's just rotate it a bit forward, something like this. And let's just decrease the scale to 90%. Okay, now that we have our text, it is time to add a bit more depth to it. So I'm going to select this text and then I'm going to go towards the layer styles and this time I'm going to add a bevel and emboss effect. So let's just go towards the bevel and emboss and now I'm going to set the style to inner bevel. However, I'm going to change the technique to chisel hard. And as you see, we will have some hard textures in here. So let's just increase the size to 25%. And let's set the highlights and shadows to 100. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go towards the angle. And then I'm going to set it on 0. And let's set a keyframe. And I'm going to move to 2 seconds. And now I'm going to rotate it for one entire rotation. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to hold Alt. And I'm going to click on this stopwatch to set up an expression. And now let's add a simple loop expression. So now we have some repeating lighting effect like this. However, in, I think if we move it by two frames, we will have a perfect loop. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is that on the next step, I'm going to create a new composition again. And this time I'm going to call it main. 
and let's start with creating a background and let's change its color to a black bluish background and now let's add the text rotation into here and now we need to add few effects to colorize our text so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create two colors one for the main text and one for the bevel and inbox effect so let's start with the bevel and emboss. So to do that, let's just turn off the background for now and let's add a solid composite, which is just a basically a solid layer that blends with the original composition. So let's change its color to black. And now what I'm going to do on the next step is that I'm gonna add a fastbox blur effect for a bit texture and let's set the blurriness to 10. And now let's add the noise HLS effect and on this one I'm gonna set the type to grain and let's also set the lightness to 25% good now what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna hold alt and then I'm gonna click on the noise to set up an expression for generating noise so I'm gonna write the posterize time by 6 so this will just basically decrease the number of the textures however in order to produce the textures, I'm gonna press enter and then I'm gonna add a random expression but like a higher number such as 10,000. So now it is going to generate the noise effect. Well, so far so good. Now let's add a CC threshold effect. Now I'm gonna leave the channel to luminance. However, I'm gonna decrease the threshold to reveal the bubble and emboss effect. All right, good. Now let's add a Luma key effect to remove the black background created by a composite effect. And I'm gonna set the type to key out the darker parts. However, I'm gonna increase the threshold to a number such as four. And now it's keying all of the darker part of our animation. And on the last step, what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna add a fill effect which we can control the color of our bevel and emboss effect. All right, now let's duplicate this text one more time. And this time I'm gonna change this solid composite to a white color. However, I'm gonna add an invert effect to invert the colors. Well, one important thing in here to mention is that the layer hierarchy matters a lot. So I'm gonna move the invert effect under the composite effect. Well, all done. So let's just change its color. Great, now let's go towards where our markers were, so we know where our loop starts. Great, now let's turn on the background. And now it is time to add some texture to finalize our work. So I'm gonna go towards my texture folder. Well, these are some textures from the texturelabs.com. So I'm gonna bring the first one in here. And then I'm gonna rotate it for 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna decrease the scale to something like 70%. Great, and now I'm gonna set the mode to lighten. However, I'm gonna add a hue and saturation effect. And then I'm gonna change the master saturation all the way to minus 100. And then I'm gonna add the levels. And this effect will help us to control the um, sort of brightness and darkness of our texture. So let's just adjust the parameters. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna go towards my texture folder again, I'm and then I'm gonna bring this texture, which as you see is a lighter one, and I'm gonna set the scale to 70%, and this time I'm gonna rotate it for minus 90 degree. And then I'm going to copy these two effects and then I'm going to paste it in here as well. However, I'm going to change the mode to multiply this time. I'm going to reset the levels in here and I'm going to do it from the beginning again. So we will have something like this. 
So now what I'm going to do on the last step is that I'm going to go towards the project panel and I'm going to bring the last texture again. And then I'm going to change its mode to add. And now let's set its scale to 70% and let's rotate it for 90 degrees this time. And let's also paste these two effects one more time. And let's reset this channel. And let's adjust them. Great. And for the last step, let's just add an adjustment layer. Let's call it post rise time. And let's add the post rise time effect into it. And now let's set the frame rate to 12 for a cartoonish look. So here's our final result. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave out a like and subscribe to the channel as it will help me out a lot to grow the channel. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.